All right, this is on the vacuum chucks I've been making. This is one of the back pieces. It's four and seven eighths, 124 millimeter, one inch thick, 25 millimeter. It's got a two and an eight mortise in the back that'll remain there. That's how it will be fastened to the chuck while in use. Now we have to drill some holes. And yes, as you will see, I'm wearing a glove. That's due to injuries in the past. I have to protect my thumb. Okay, the first thing we got to do is drill a 7 8 hole a quarter of an inch deep. So, we will see. And get it close. going to be about right. Now we switch it out for a three quarter inch bit. It will go all the way through. And don't get too carried away with drilling this hole. You want it until you just feel it give on the back side. About right there. Otherwise you'll ram your bit into your chuck and you'll have to buy a new bit. Well, it didn't quite go all the way. chips out of there so it don't interfere. Right, we'll test this. Oh perfect. Jeez, I'm getting good at this. Alright. No, I shouldn't have done that. Ouch. Okay, now on the, when you go to put this bearing in, it goes this way. You have to put a very small amount of glue. I use this go-to glue by Loctite. Uh, the gentleman that sells these recommended it. Uh, it stays a little bit flexible. Seals very well. Almost like silicone, but it's a glue. All right, come on. Gotta watch this stuff really comes out of here sometimes. You don't want to get it on the black sealing rings. Um, that will cause them to spin and burn up, and you'll have a bearing going bad very rapidly. Now if some should squeeze out on the outside, you can just quickly take your finger, that's what I do, and get it away from the seal. Okay, that's all it takes to put it in. <clears throat> now, in order to hold it in so it can't be popped out, we're going to drill, ooh, that looks good, two little holes. Uh, 
Now we install two screws to hold the bearing down tight. There. Now it's secure. It's sealed with glue. We don't worry about the tube going out the other end yet. You've got work to do here. in this to hold your PVC. Now I happen to know the outside diameter of this is uh, 4 and 3 sixteenths. This gets me close. Or reverse switch on this thing is not a handy place. All right. And I won't measure it with the lathe on, I promise. Now this happens to be some scheduled 20 PVC I'm going to be using. So I know it's an eighth of an inch thick. You can use Schedule 40 if you want. Um, just makes it beefier. You want the groove to be about three eighths of an inch deep. This is just a scrap piece I had laying around. There we go. That's the way it works. All right. Take this off. Now we got to glue it into that groove. Now this glue usually, uh, you can usually work in about two hours if you're gentle. And your temper's not raging, like mine usually is. If you want to uh, wait overnight, it's even better. Even glue makes me even patient. You want to make sure this really squishes out all the way around so that you know it's a complete airtight seal. Also, when you're cut, deciding on making these, Use a wood that's very dense. Maple, poplar will work. Do not use oak. I wouldn't use walnut. They, the capillary tubes are way too big. You'll lose vacuum, which is not good at 500 RPM if you happen to lose all your vacuum. It could get real exciting real fast. Okay, 
See it's squishing out. Give it a little rotation to make sure it's sealing everywhere. Don't wipe off the excess, leave it there. It adds extra strength anyhow, but it, that way you don't end up with a void that will leak vacuum. Now this is gonna have to set up, <coughs> excuse me, for two hours before I prep the top. So this video is gonna be done in segments. And uh, Stephen King, I'm not, so you just have to bear with me. This camera won't allow me to do it all in one step. Okay, now we can go ahead and put the actual vacuum tube that goes to your pump or vac, shot vac, whatever. It just presses in there. It's good enough seal, holds it tight. And in this case, with mine, I've tried straightening this stuff with hot water, like he says. I haven't had any luck yet. Right, get, there we go. And it'll feed through. On the back of these, I have marked with a black magic marker. You can line it up with the number one or some particular thing on the chuck, whatever. You want to install it every time with that black mark in the same spot. Just in case there's a little run out in the chuck or in the jaws as they wear, this will keep it within the 1 16th parameter for balance on these things. So yeah, this is on where it's supposed to be. Take them out, Dave. Let's clean it up a little bit. Spread it around. Yeah, spread it around. Now see the tube comes out the back. I've made an adapter. Piece of maple, 3 8 copper tube, and some 5 16 fuel line. This end goes into the end of my vacuum hose, the shop back. Then your plastic tube will just push in there for a tight fit, just a friction fit. Now, I've drilled a quarter inch hole in my shop back tube. That allows enough air to go through the vacuum hose so you don't burn up your motor in your shop back. And I've used mine quite a bit already and it does work. It keeps it from blowing up. Okay. We gotta let this dry. When it's dry, then we'll come back and I'll show you how the outer piece is made and putting the goop soft sealing material across it. So I'll be back as soon as I get this dry and uh, we'll finish it up. All right, been a couple hours. Now we have to make sure this is trued up so it's nice and flat. Just real gentle. So you don't jerk anything out of place. Now that's totally trued up, flat all the way around. Marvelous. Now we have to put a groove in the part that's going to go off on top. Boom. 
same dimensions as the bottom. about three eighths deep on this one too. Because it's important to be able to get it deep enough so it does nicely when in a glue dry. There we go. Found it. That's what happens when you get old. And by the way, you'll see me moving my tool rest while it's still moving. Okay, technically that's a no-no. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It's not a wise idea. Because if you do get a catch with the toolbar, it could do some drastic damage to you and the lathe. Which I've never had it happen, but I've heard of it. Okay, now. Gotta fill the groove. Now, according to my wife, this glue is not found everywhere. So you may have to uh, check a few places. And of course, if you have a mail system that's actually working where you're at, you could probably uh, maybe find it on Amazon or one of those places. Um, we don't have a mail system that's working, so it's always a hunt to find things. Okay, now. Marvelous. not intended. No, I won't do that again. Just want to make sure it's sealed. No flying off. Throw the tail stock back on. Hang on a second. I've been doing a test of my new hollowing bar support system while I was waiting for glue to dry.
crapola. Yep, give me just a second. I'm gonna try and do this without swearing. It's the Rikon 220 VSR is the worst tail sock assembly I've ever seen. Take it off. Don't be in a hurry to put it back on because you're not going to get anywhere in a hurry. I know I gave this lathe a pretty good review. But I hadn't taken the tail stock off yet. Well, now that I have, I must say, um, somebody needs to do a redesign. Jesus. Oh, cool. There. Now, oh, where'd it go? Since that glue is still uh, wet, I'm going to support this with my tail stock just because I don't want to wear it. I'll turn my speed down. I don't know, we can probably get away with 320 without slinging poo all over the walls. Yeah, there we go. And we want to round this outside over a nice gentle curve. really doesn't matter about that point in the middle because we're going to be cutting that out of there. We'll be applying glue to uh, the surface work. You don't have to sand it or anything like that. It's just going to be uh, a surface to hold the 
foam. It's just uh, Walmart craft foam, eighth of an inch. Uh, it doesn't have the peel and stick. It's the kind you use the glue on. Yep. Give me trouble, eh? Side part of the curve. This could be a little fun. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if I can get away with it. I may have to wait for this glue to set up some. Oh yeah. Well, I guess there's going to be a third part. And I won't say what I had in mind. Because we have to continue this curve down inside. This will all be taken out, of course, so the vacuum can get through there. Suck the air out. Um, this glue really should be dry because otherwise, if it starts to spin bad, you'll throw the glue out and uh, you won't have a good seal. So, I shall return when this glue is dry. Didn't think this was going to be an all day endeavor. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, later. All right. I'm back. Aren't you thrilled? Uh, we now get to turn the center with another curve. Mm. It's usually best to do this with a light cut. I'm using a quarter inch gouge. Makes it real nice to handle on something like this. You get down really fine little shavings. You get just the right curve. Now here comes a blend part. Making a donut. There we go. I'm starting to see a hole in it. Mm -hmm. 
the reason you want to put a curve on the inside of it too is if you decide you want to do a steer or a round box, something like that. You can use the vacuum chuck to hold it in place also. Sorry. sure there's no little rough areas. Okay, this is a no-no. <clears throat> okay, you're not supposed to stick your finger in the spinning holes, is the rule. cut a piece of foam. It's 8 inch craft. It's going to go on here. Now to spray some glue. Here's my cornflake box.
Okay, I use the uh, 3M Super 77. I've used this stuff for years on everything. It sticks real well if you follow the directions. And I've never had it peel off. You don't want to get it on you either because it don't come off. wood and you got in green in two spots don't be afraid to pour the, you know really put it on don't mind the bubbles that they'll go away but you got to make sure it'll stick yeah I know most of my clothes are ruined from sticking glue on them paint Some of my pants are so covered with stuff they'll stand up in the corner all by themselves. Oop, missed a spot. Okay, now we get to get gotta wait just a little bit until it comes tacky. I don't have my hair dryer out here. Or I could make it move a little faster. The heat's running, so maybe that'll help. I made the mistake of turning the lathe on once at 240 RPM with this stuff. Run the face shield. <clears throat> As it gets on there, it don't come off. Alrighty. All going down here. Oh, it's getting there. Usually, once I get the fabric on there, I'm going to cut the center, I don't know, like an asterisk, maybe eight slices, so it folds in very easily. When I fold it around the outside, I leave the excess, take blue painter's tape, wrap around it, hold it in place, and then uh, basically I wander off to go do something else, turn something else and uh, leave it to cure. And then later you can come back with a razor knife or something, trim off the excess, trim the inside out, and then it's set to use. And they do work. <clears throat> Even with a shop bag, they do work. Let me see, oh, okay, that's pretty sticky. That's not so sticky. There, we'll help it along here. Good God. Looks like something out of a sci-fi. Wherever you make those at, it just rips. That's good. And I'll fold the outside over. This can get to be a pain. Because you gotta keep going round and round and round and round. Oh shit, get in there. Probably should have waited a little bit more.
You just gotta keep working around because you gotta get them kind of like folds out of there. Otherwise you won't have any vacuum. Now if I'd have waited another 10, 15 minutes, maybe it been, wouldn't have had so much. The inside always seems to be easier. I go through rolls of this constantly. The best stuff I ever ran across. Painter state. Anyway, blue stuff, green stuff. I think there's some yellow out there. Stuff works amazing. And it doesn't leave a mark, doesn't tear anything. Now, where to put the bowl? The bowl. Actually, this will help put a bowl on here and get the vacuum fired up. It will actually help to push all that in place because the vacuum's a lot stronger than you think. And of course, I'm becoming oh there a dimension piece and I lose stuff. Okay, put my tube on. Which I took this off just to make it easier to get in and out because I didn't want to fight it. Because this tube will be able to spin so you don't have to worry about it binding up or anything. Sure, it don't fall out and drop the hole all over the place. Though it's been on the floor twice already. Okay. I will eventually have a <coughs> vacuum pump from Harbor Freight, but in the meantime, this works rather well. It's noisy as all get out. Yes, it is. All right, where's those? <clears throat> Almost said another dirty word. Okay, hold on to your ears.
this is how you would set it up so you can turn off the bottom until you get to a point. Get the little nib and back this up. You take off that little nib with nothing in the way. And it will it will hold. jet engine. I'll be glad to get a vacuum pump. That'll just help hold that in till it totally sets up. Like I said, leave it set, let the glue dry. You can come back, pull the tape off, trim all this funky leftover, and you will have a working vacuum chuck. Whether you hook it to a vacuum cleaner or vac shop vac, not a regular vacuum cleaner or to a vacuum pump, homemade, store-bought, whatever. You need at least 2.5 CFM minimum to hold things on here. Uh, if you can get a three, that's even better. You'll find many, many uses. I'm even making a small one right here that's going to be used for small boxes, hollowed out, end grain boxes, things like that. It will have a rubber seal on the end, use vacuum, I can put it on there to do my sanding, decorate the bottom, whatever's necessary. It, the ideas are limitless, all you got to do is sit and think about it. That's completed, all except trimming. So. If you have any questions, uh, I can always be reached by uh, private message on Facebook. I check in many times a day, and uh, I will gladly answer any questions. So, thanks for putting up with me. I'm not not a video man, but I promised God I'd do it. Like I said, any questions? Just ask. Later, folks.